Hey, how's it going guys? I wanted to do a quick little tutorial on how to get Flux Context running inside of Comfy UI. This is something that I had a pretty hard time finding, believe it or not, and figured there are probably other people out there who are looking to also use Context inside of Comfy. So this is kind of the easiest way to go about it, I've found. But aside from what we're going over today, I'll also provide all the resources I've looked at in the description if you guys want to take a look for yourselves. So it's pretty straightforward. First thing you're going to do is go over to your your comfy UI. And so the first thing that you're going to want to know is that in order to use this particular node, which is a comfy UI node, you're going to want to be running this locally. So for example, trying to run this in RunPod, I haven't been able to get it to work, but they do have some documentation on running it in RunPod. I guess you just have to make sure that you're whitelisted with them. So make sure that you're running comfy UI locally. Then obviously what you're going to want to do is go to manager and update all. Then once you've got everything updated, just restart comfy. Then you're going to want to go up to workflow and browse templates. And you'd think that it would be inside of Flux, right? But it's actually inside of Image API. So we have a few different ones that you can choose from here. If you're looking to use Context, these are going to be your three options. So for example, we have Context Max, Context Pro, and then the Multi Image Input. I've been using the Multi Image Input, but I'm sure that either of these would be fine too. And so one thing to keep in mind is that you don't have to get your own API key, which is part of the benefit of using the Comfy UI nodes but this is still paid, unfortunately. But when you compare it to ChatGPT's $20 or even $200 a month subscription, it's really not that bad. For Context Pro, it's only four cents an image, which is really insane. So once you have the workflow or once you've picked whichever one you want, first make sure that this node is not red. If it is, try updating and restarting one more time. That fixed it for me. And then what you're gonna want to do after that is go to your settings, then click on user, and and if you don't have a Comfy UI account, you're going to want to sign in here and then also add some credits. Be a little careful though. This is my first time using Comfy UI credits and I haven't seen any issues, but I have read reports of users basically just being charged overnight for things that they didn't purchase. So just keep an eye out, be a little bit wary. But again, for four cents an image, five bucks, for example, is going to get you a long way. I mean, I've tested just about everything I wanted to test with this so far, and I have not even spent $2. So definitely pretty affordable. And honestly, four cents per image is a pretty good cost to pay to run these images through a further workflow. And that's another thing that I wanted to touch on is that obviously the benefit of having a comfy UI flex context node is being able to generate a new image and then automatically pass that image through some further process like a skin refiner, for example, that we've been talking about. And so if you guys saw my previous video, I talked a little bit about consistent characters with Gemini and how context would likely be better for that. And it definitely is from my testing, but the process problem is that these generated images do not automatically pass to the next step, which I think is very bizarre. And I won't get too deep into it, but essentially if we run this, you'll see we get this ultimate upscale error, basically saying that channels don't match. And what I've been able to read is that this has a lot to do with the image itself and the color channels within the image. Now I could be totally wrong on that, that's just what I've read, but what that means is that the image coming directly out of flux context is not compatible with a pass along workflow, so to speak. But for example, if we take this image, which was generated with flux context in this exact workflow that we get from the workspace or workflow templates and just load it as its own image, and then we run a new workflow, you can see that it works just fine. We don't see any of those channel mismatch issues. So truthfully, I can't entirely say what the solution is there. I'd be really curious to hear if anyone has a workaround. I think when we talk about at scale workflow deployment or some sort of automated system, I think the solution really is passing the output from this workflow as a load image into another workflow. But as of now, I haven't found a way to do that within Comfy. It's likely something that would need to be done back end. But overall, the workflow is actually super simple and technically this is all you're going to get if you're using the template. And really, all you need to know is you load your first image and your second image, which then gets stitched or concatenated together. Then if you have a third image, you can de-bypass enable bypass you know what i mean on your third image to open up that third option which again is stitched 
with the original stitch. And so the result, for example, would be something like this. You can see in this particular instance, we had a image of this young lady, then just some random aviator glasses and a cap that I found on Amazon. And so this is what gets passed to Flux Context, which it then uses to create a new image. And one thing to keep in mind specifically for the Flux Context node is this aspect ratio, which is super bizarre. For example, if we take a quick look at the aspect ratio description, it says the image must be between 1 to 4 and 4 to 1. But if you put 9 by 16 or 16 by 9 or 3 by 4, it will do that. So I'm not sure, maybe I'm missing something just on the ratio math end. <laughs> And technically, yeah, 9 by 16 does simplify, but I just feel like the statement can be a little bit misleading, especially to those who maybe aren't as detailed when it comes to ratios and graphics and things like that. So I just wanted to call this out. And what's even more annoying is that I haven't been able to find a way to like do this automatically to match your input image. For example, you'd think that you'd be able to connect these nodes in some way, shape or form, right? But unfortunately, again, maybe I just haven't found it yet. If somebody does, please let me know. I just haven't seen a automatic or programmatic way to adjust your aspect ratio. So just something to keep in mind that you may want to fiddle with this with your generations. But enough of the setup, we can kind of look briefly at the results. Obviously, you guys kind of know I'm sure about context already, so I won't get too deep into it. But I did want to touch on some things that I found particularly interesting that I did not think context was going to be able to do. And one of those things is good selfie images. I think this is something that ChatGPT 4.0 really excels at extremely well. Those vintage feeling iPhone distorted vibes. And I think context is a little too clean, but if you're looking for a kind of simple, cheaper alternative just for like one-off images without paying $20 a month, this is 100% going to be your way to go. For example, if we look at our inputs, we have this young lady with the kind of orange-ish, I don't know, is that orange? brown let me know in the comments <laughs> sweater then we have this main character for a video that i've been working on so you can see the black sweater the kind of unibrow look and then we have our prompt an iphone selfie photograph of a woman and man both with brown hair taken in london the london eye is visible behind them and you can see it nailed it and what's really interesting too is like it didn't just put a ferris wheel in the background you can see the london eye does have these like pods which are really cool if you've never been there they've got these kind of pods and not necessarily like the crates that most ferris wheels have that you just kind of openly set in and if we look back at this image you can see that it does do that so it's following detail and well context very very well and could you get the same thing through gpt 4.0 absolutely but again if you're looking for a cheaper alternative or something to potentially pass along into a deeper workflow maybe something that goes to one with vase or uh, anything along those lines that's not particularly something you can do with chat gpt 4.0 and there is an open ai gpt image one model node which is the model that runs the gpt 4.0 image generation backend but again it's going to be more expensive so it's just something to keep in mind that you do have options now let's try something a little bit more complicated and maybe a little bit more of a business advertising use case. So this is just an image I pulled from Amazon of just some random patio cushion company. And this is just kind of a cool random pattern that I generated using GPT 4.0. And we can bypass these nodes since we don't need a third image. Then what we'll do is we'll come over to our prompt. Then we'll just say replace the tan cushions with the yellow floral pattern. And so coming back to this image, this is just absolutely insane. I don't think we really realize the power of this. And if you know Comfy UI, the power that you have, for example, this type of image adjustment is something that would not be cheap at scale for a business. And if we compare it with the original image, you can see that obviously there's a lot more green here and this one's a little bit more blown out. But if we look at the chairs, for example, like this is 100% the same image. And if we look at the quality, obviously it's kind of matching the quality of the original image, which was just straight up a screenshot. But in this particular case, that's actually not a bad thing. Because if you think about it, what do, what is the next logical step here? Especially if you're doing this for a business, right? Well, the next logical step is to upscale and bring that detail back. So now imagine if you had hyper-realistic cushions with the super detailed pattern on these completely distorted, grainy chairs. Well, your upscaling would be an absolute mess. But in this particular case, you could upscale 
upscale the whole image and have that adjustment distributed evenly across everything without anything actually popping out and standing out more than it should. Which is why really I'm so disappointed that we can't just pass this image along. So truly, if anybody's able to figure that out, I would love to hear that. And let's even take this up a notch. We'll sub the original image with this new image of our brand new cushions. We'll add our young lady back and we'll just say the young lady is sitting on the cushion, smiling and relaxing, marketing photography. Good, not great. We can see a little bit of issue here. I think it did a great job with the cushions though. Definitely that same pattern, definitely the same hair and obviously the same outfit. If we go back, you can see like these kind of black straps. So overall result here, not bad, not great. And again, coming back to passing this along, this is something that could totally be fixed. All right, let's try another example here. We have this image of this Awala, I guess, water bottle. This one's actually pretty challenging. This bottle's got a pretty distinct look, so I'm curious to see how it'll do here. The young lady is holding the water bottle up to the camera with her arm extended, studio marketing photography. Let's give that a run. A little funnier of a result here, but it's not wrong. It did follow the prompt. And again, we can see definitely the same person. Still a little bit of weirdness happening here, but again, something that could be fixed. Same with around her shoulder, but also not entirely abnormal. Really interesting here is the fingers and fingernails. Great work there. And we also see it kind of got the name. Looks like it missed the L there or maybe like started it and then never finished it. But if we look at like the shape of the bottle and where the button is, that's pretty impressive too. It even got the coloring of the bottle right which is pretty sweet and so when we think about what are the alternatives to a workflow like this right before it used to be I believe IDM Viton ace plus plus was another great option for product photography but with these new context and auto regressive models we very well may not need that anymore and same goes with Laura's too right like why do we need to train Laura's when we will eventually be able to feed really any image of anybody to a model just a single picture and get pretty phenomenal results back. And again, don't forget, we can do nine by 16 here if we're going for, you know, maybe like a meta ad or something like that, something that would be a vertical post. And again, same type of deal, kind of interesting. Um, I wonder if we change it to is smiling at the camera and holding the water bottle see if that makes a difference. Hey, that's pretty good. That's probably the best one we've gotten. So definitely a ton of application for product photography as well. Wonder if we give it a reference. Will it be able to uh, kind of deduce what we're trying to do? Here's another picture that I generated. This was through GPT-40. So let's see what happens here if we enter almost like a, a pose. Yeah, so pose references, control net, not quite as good as how GPT-40 has it. So overall, it's pretty cool. Um, there are a lot of benefits, a lot of also kind of areas of improvement, I think. But also don't forget that this isn't even the open source version yet. Black Forest Labs, creator of Context, has said that they will be releasing open source weights soon, whenever soon is. So we should be able to see models that will run locally inside of Comfy UI or RunPod that can then be used to kind of push images further. Maybe we'll even be able to add control nets and things like that. Pretty cool. If you guys found this interesting, please leave a like, comment, subscribe. If you have any questions, we're always here to answer them. And again, all the resources you need are in the description and also on our Patreon. Thank you guys, and I will talk to you later.